welcome to today's gel polish course. So today I'm going to teach you the application of gel polish. Uh, and today we are using some demo fingers instead of client's fingers. Um, have you ever done gel polish before? No, I have not. No worries. So what we're going to do today, I'm just going to talk you through the theory of application and then we'll do a demonstration and then we can take any questions that you've got as we're going on. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use these little fake fingers and we're going to prep the finger to start with. So normally on a client you would use a 180 grit final to prep the natural nail and you push back your cuticles and trim any dead skin or anything like that. But because we're using these little fake fingers we're going to use these little buffing blocks mm -hmm. and you're going to buff across the nail yes. until it's all removed the shine and then we're going to use these little brushes to just brush away any of the uh, fibres that are left on the nail. Once we've done that, then we'll begin our application of the polish. So when applying polish, you apply one layer of base coat, mm -hmm. two of a colour, and then your top coat. Depending on colours, depending on brand, some are more translucent than others, some you may want that translucent, say some you may want a little bit more opaqueness, so you may need to add, apply an extra coat depending on the colour. Uh, today we are going to use uh, a dark colour, we're going to use a red because they're really good for showing any like mistakes, quite a hard colour to use on a client. Um, after we've applied our colour and polish, um, then we normally apply cuticle oil to a client, but today we will not do that. Uh, any questions so far? No. no. Perfect. So, when doing nails with clients in general, you really want to protect your hands from any kind of allergies or anything like that. So, you can go ahead and pop your gloves on. Perfect. We can take our fake finger, and I'm going to use, like I said previously, like I said previously the buffer, to just buff across the nail as well as you can. These can be quite difficult, these little uh, fingers. Perfect. Just like that. And just dust off any polish there. Beautiful. Then we're going to use uh, the base coat. Just open this up. And apply evenly up to the cuticle and down the neck. Same for the side walls. As close as you can without touching the skin. So you're doing a little, a little motion at the, at top. the top. yeah. yeah. So yeah. what I do with that, get some on your brush, but you don't want to overload your brush. You want to go up to the cuticle wall, mm -hmm. and I do like a little bounce, just to kind of like tap it in there, but not not directly put the brush in. Kind of let the, let the product do the work for you, mm -hmm. rather than make it more difficult. Once you've covered, you're happy with the coverage of the entire nail, you just pop it in the lamp. And with these polishes, they cure for 60 seconds, so you can just press that on there. Uh, do you want to get started with yours? And we'll uh, start this first part for you. In between the finger and the thumb. Yeah. Like that. Perfect. And then you may need to hold on to the tip on these ones just because of the little practice finger, but as, as well as you can get it covered. Perfect. Do the oh, it's all right. Just pop it back in. There we are. Okay. 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 It won't happen with a client. No, I hope not. So a bit just a rough. Just a, just to rough up the nail. It's more important with a, a client's nail, you're doing this to get rid of any oils right. um, on your client's nail plate. Any oils could cause the product to lift and obviously you don't want that to happen. With a practice finger, it doesn't particularly matter, it's just to get used to the processes. Right. Um, but it all will be wrote down in your manual. Mm -hmm. So your next step was to use the, the brush just to dust away any of those particles because you don't want them getting in your gel. A giant toothbrush. <laughs> so then you want to use your base coat, so it's the one closest to you. And you want a decent amount on your brush, but you don't want it overloaded, so use the side to wipe some off. Perfect. And then, like I said previously, you want to use that kind of small motion up towards the cuticle and slightly bounce it in. Perfect. And drag down the nail. Same for your side walls. Don't be afraid to turn your client's hand if need be. Obviously, it's easier with the uh, practice fingers. And then once you're happy with the coverage, beautiful, you can pop that in the lamp. So your next step while yours is cooking is to use some gel wipe off solution and a little pad just to take off the inhibition layer that it leaves. I found per personally, if I don't do this step, when I apply some of the gel polishes, they go a bit a bit funny. So it's best to just take that off. And we'll just give that a couple of seconds just to dry it off. Next, we're going in with our polish. So like I said today, we're gonna to be using this red polish because they are so difficult to do on a client because if somebody moves and it gets into the cuticle area, it does it does bleed a lot, so it, it can require a bit of cleanup. So best to practice with these ones as much as you can, this and black. So just the same process as we did previously. You're going to want to bounce it slightly up into the cuticle as close as you can get without actually touching it and drag it down the nail. And you're going to do the same for your side walls. So as close as you can get without actually touching, you don't want to flood your client. And 
you don't want to cause any allergies by getting any unnecessary gel polish onto your client's skin. Now, for me personally, this is a little trick that I tend to do. I like to get as close as I can and then use a small little brush and the polish on a little palette, dip it into it, and then if you see, I come in with my little brush and get as close as I can. I find you get more control with these little brushes than you do with the big brush. And this will just give you that nice, clean application that clients are looking for and that you would like. And then that way, if a client goes to move while you're doing this, it's less of a clean up than it would be if you were doing a full bottom like this. Okay. Would you ever do that before and then fill in the fill in the like? Yeah, you can do. I've done it. I've done it both ways around. Both works. You can also. So if you see here, it's a little bit that's just gone up this side. So I use these little cotton sticks and I just go in and just swipe like that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So then this one, same with your base coat, would just go in for the sixty seconds. So then we need to do so wipe things. off your inhibition layer. Perfect. Yeah. Try to blow on your hands. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got it comfortably? Yeah. Perfect. You don't want too much on your brush, just like you did with the base coat. And just the same motion as you did with the base coat. So you'll be able to see this easier because it's a, a colour rinse there. So bounce that up to the top, perfect, and then take it down. Down. I find one of the best things to do is to rest your pinky finger on the client as you go down. It stabilises your finger and it'll give you a smoother line. Ah, okay. Perfect. Do you find that a bit easier? Yeah, a bit more. They will up until I get to the end. But definitely the, the top. It all comes with practice. Mm -hmm. Just any little bits that you've got that are on the skin, just to just to clean them up. You don't want to cure any product onto a client's skin because that can cause allergies. Would that be an allergy to the pulp? Yeah, you what happens is that uh, allergies to nail products become cumulative, so they come over time. So now that this one's come out, and we've done as base coat with first coat of colour, we go in with our second coat. So same again, nice even thin coats, and I just repeat the same motions. The good thing is, is that because you, you've gone in with the little brush and you've already gone around and got close to your cuticle, you don't particularly need to do that on the second time. You can get nice, closely in there. Just like that. So then we will pop him in. You want to do your second coat now. It's a nice colour. It's a gorgeous colour. To paint with? Uh, probably nudes or anything that matches the base colour. So if you're using like a, uh, a builder gel, for mm -hmm. instance, as your base, any kind of colour that matches that, just generally because you don't need to worry about us getting as close to the cuticle as previously, like, because the colour matches. Um, definitely most difficult is your blacks, your reds, stark white can be difficult. Yeah. The thing you could do if you're struggling with the clean up is use one of these, but dip it into your gel wipe off mm. and try, give that a try. It might glide a little bit easier for yeah, you. Is that a bit better? Well. Perfect. Got a little bit crazy. That's okay, it happens. That's what teaching's for. That's what we're doing it for. Yeah, happy with that. So put it back in the lamp. Can stick it into cure. Perfect. So while yours is curing, I'll show you how to do your top coat. So, with reds especially, and blacks, when you are doing any other kind of 
colour with it, um, or just in general to be fair, because the you have an inhibition layer with a gel polish, so it's kind of got that tacky, sticky layer that like fur can get stuck into mm. and fluff and stuff. So with reds especially, when you have this inhibition layer, if you were to be doing something else with this, I've personally found that when I go to put the top coat on, if I just put it on, it kind of smudges the inhibition layer um, because it's so pigmented, the colour smudges, and if you're working with some other colours, it can get quite annoying that your colour smudged about. So just as we did previously with the base colour, we're going to take another one of these little pads and your gel wipe off and just give the nail a wipe just to get any of that off. And as you can see, it just takes off a little bit of the cover. So now that that's fully back in there, we're then going to use our top coat. So I use the no wipe top coat. This means that it won't have an inhibition layer afterwards. So you can put this on, pop it in the lamp, and there's going to be no sticky layer after. Yeah. So same as with previous, you're going to bounce it up to the top of it and drag it down the nail. Nice, even top coat. Perfect. Okay. Nice and <laughs> Perfect. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. So you see what I mean? If, if you were to be doing that with another colour, mm. especially like a white or if you were doing like it as a French or something like that, it could bleed into something else and it cause a bit of an issue, mm. which you definitely don't want. Mm. And then you want your top coat. Yeah. point usually your nail will be done at this point you've done all 10 um, at this stage with a regular client you would pop on some cute glue just around the cute glue area just to keep it nice and nourish it gives it a really nice fine finished look um, for your clients to enjoy happy with that love it right so do you have any questions anything that you need that you're unsure on anything that you need help with i don't think that i did have quite a few while we were going no, that's fine it's perfectly fine um no no happy with that i think so perfect 